Here we are on the cusp of what would have been The Sims 5, but EA has instead announced that they will essentially be continuing with The Sims 4, despite how many players feel about the franchise. There are many who now look back on The Sims 3 with rose-colored glasses, and well, they aren't wrong. The base game of The Sims 3 was, and still is, pretty flawless and a massive jump from the stuck at home and living in between loading screens variety. Let's take a look back at just some of what you could do in the base game of The Sims 3. Oh no! A load screen! Oh wait, it's nearly 2025. Computers today load up the core game in about 10 seconds or less. Welcome to Sunset Valley, a nice little neighborhood wedged into the lore of The Sims 1 and 2 that has all the amenities you need to live life. Sure, it's missing some stuff that the expansions added, but the town is one of the only ones that ever stayed working right during the game's lifespan. You can choose a household and get right into it, but everybody likes to create their own Sims. Create a Sim is loaded with all kinds of cool stuff compared to the first two games, such as weight and muscle tone sliders, and the all-important boob slider. For our purposes, we are going to follow the lives of the male sim Narf Toonie and his girlfriend Barbara Kronk. Names I'm sure you've heard spoken in Simless before during a sim's many neurotic bouts of frustration. You can edit a sim's eye color, hair, facial structure, body hair, makeup, and even tattoos. As far as clothing, there are many categories and everything can be custom colored with the widely praised create a style feature. But the biggest thing about The Sims 3 was the trait system. Building off of The Sims 2's wishes and fears, Sims can now be everything from ambitious to vegetarian, and it will help guide your gameplay. Our friend Narf Tooney here will aspire to reach the top of the culinary career track, as he is a workaholic and a natural cook. Being a couch potato, the cooking channel on TV will help him both have fun and learn. But of course, he has to be a little neurotic too. Barbara Kronk will be the perfect aid to Narf Tooney's ambitions, as she will be an angler and a green thumb, meaning she's a natural at fishing and gardening. She loves to be outside and will fertilize a garden with the fish that she catches. And heck, let's make her have good luck and be a good kisser too. There is Build By Mode, which isn't as detailed as The Sims 4, but it still features a lot of tools to design to your heart's content. We will be starting in the pre-built monotone house of Sunset Valley just to speed things up. Right away, we can see there's no load at all! It takes you straight into the open world village, where you can zoom in and out of your home lot at will and scatter your Sims all over. We need to have Narf Tooney join the culinary career as the breadwinner of the household, but rather than wait on the newspaper or buy a computer, we can just taxi him over to the local restaurant to apply. Now granted, it doesn't look the prettiest on modern graphics cards for some reason, especially if you only have it render one lot at a time to save power, but it's the fun that matters! Unfortunately, we see one of the biggest gripes of The Sims 3, rabbit holes. But are they really that bad? In a way, they're like a multitasker's best friend. Meanwhile, back at the house, Barbara needs a gardening book. But there's no bookshelf, and it's not one of the ones that comes with a bookshelf. So we have to send her to the bookstore, and while she does that, Narf Tooney can read about the basics of cooking for his new job. And from there, it's your basic taking care of Sims' needs in a humble little abode. But the reason we are focusing on cooking, gardening, and fishing is because those are the three big skills of the base game that work well together and showcase the open world, as well as a neat quest line we will get into at the end. Barbara Kronk needs to learn the fishing skill to coincide with her gardening, so she will head to the park while Narf sleeps. But her needs are decaying, so it's up to Narf to serve a meal and then straight to bed with her. But there's more to all of this. The Sims 3 has lifetime happiness points based on how many promised wishes get fulfilled. Up to four wishes can be promised at a time, such as a desire to watch the cooking channel or kiss another Sim. Once enough lifetime happiness points are accrued, 
You can buy massive perks like never needing a bathroom again. Or for our purposes, the all-important collection helper for pinpointing tiny little seeds on rather rough-looking grass. I swear back in the day it didn't look this bad, and I really think it's the graphics card. So, while Narf goes to his first day of work, Barbara will collect seeds to plant in her garden. It's just a quick zoom out to the open world and looking for apple icons, and then picking them up. Right away we found some rare seeds, which is both lucky and unlucky because they're really good, but we're not high enough skill level yet to plant them. So, before heading home we grab a few standard vegetable ones too. We'll put the apple tree in the back corner and make a grid of lettuce, tomatoes, and grapes. Then it's back to improving that skill so we can weed and fertilize the plants. Luckily, Narf gets promoted and the skills come fast on triple speed. And well, that's the setup! Now it's just maintaining the grind of going to work and gardening while making sure to take the time to fish every now and then for fertilizer and something important later on. And absolutely keep the cooking going too, even if it's mystery macaroni, because level 10 cooking is essential for completing the lifetime desire to be a 5 star chef and that special something we plan to do at the end. Eventually you may find yourself a little bored in the waiting periods, so that's when you try for a baby, because there's some toddler stuff involved in the base game as well that The Sims 4 didn't have at first. But that comes later. First, there's learning all the new recipes like ratatouille and fish and chips, and of course, watching the garden grow. But now we're going to need a specific type of fish later on, so it's off to the bookstore to start learning the bait for several fish. The most important book will be the one that tells us the bait to use for the angel fish, as the angel fish is the bait needed for the death fish. Like I said, for the base game, the fishing is pretty well polished and integrated with the other skills. Oh, and by the way, if the TV breaks during all of this learning, don't try to look through the fuzz for dirty images. It ain't the 90s no more. Besides, it's time for real baby making anyway. Once the deed is done, you can toddler prep the house by adding a crib, a high chair, and a potty training toilet. Then it's back to the garden, but with new morning sickness to worry about, so keep the toilet nearby. But don't start playing like it's any other Sims game. You'll get the stir-crazy moodlet for not leaving the house and enjoying what the open world has to offer. When it's baby time, the only logical thing to do is freak out helplessly. But after you get your fill of that, you should probably rush to the hospital. What do you know? Narf Toonie and Barbara Kronk had a baby girl. We'll call her Effley, as in Effley Condoroy, another simlish phrase that randomly happens sometimes. Taking care of a baby is easy in The Sims 3. It's just a matter of giving a bottle and changing a diaper every now and then while remembering to actually give it attention. But when Effley ages up to a toddler, that's when it gets more involved. So while you wait on that, Cook up some flapjacks and consider getting married since you just had a child out of wedlock like the dirty creature you are. Anyway, babies are boring, so rush to that birthday cake and enjoy a rather weird looking toddler magically spawning in. Unfortunately, the kid can't have cake, so it's time for the high chair and some good old brown slop. Look at her. She loves it. Oh, whoa, that's a close-up of something else now. But your job's not done! You've got to do all the toddler things like potty training. Let's watch now as the toddler strains on the john. Mm-hmm. That's the beginnings of many rendezvous with the commode. But next up, you've got to teach her how to walk and talk. Otherwise, you might have some mutant fish child on the next birthday. Granted, the Sims 3 Generations Expansion Pack added even more for toddlers and children, but for the base game, this is still pretty impressive and fulfilling if the family thing is your playstyle. 
Once the toddler grows into a child, it's all about school. But on weekends while dad works, she can help mom go fishing for the garden and learn a skill for herself. But one of the more wholesome interactions for children's sims is the ability to ask for help with their homework. Again, the Generations expansion pack adds a lot more things like tree houses and seesaws, but at least the child can play with toys, blocks, a toy oven, and go swinging in the base game. When they grow up into a teen, it's really just more of the same without the Generations expansion, only they can now get a part-time job to assist with the funds. But on to more interesting things that are in the base game. It's time for Narf to learn the recipe for Ambrosia, the ultimate divine dish of the Sims world that costs 12,000 simoleons at the bookstore. He needs to max out his cooking skill to prepare it, but that's the easy part. The hard part falls on Barbara Kronk to find a life fruit seed and harvest it once it's grown, as the recipe calls for a life fruit and a death fish. How do you get the death fish? Well, you look in your fishing skill journal and see that the bait is an angel fish, and the angel fish bait is an alley catfish. So, you stock up on catfish at the grocery store, use it to catch a ton of angel fish, and then after midnight in the spooky graveyard, use the angel fish to catch death fish, assuming your fishing skill is high enough. Don't mind the ghosts. Now, why are we doing all this? Well, Ambrosia can reset a sim's aging cycle, meaning, for example, an adult about to turn into an elder can revert back to the beginning of adulthood, prolonging old age. But perhaps even cooler than that is the ability to bring sims back from the dead. So say, for instance, you try to repair a dishwasher with no handiness skill and you get electrocuted. You will have a nice visit from death and mourn the loss of your sim for a couple days. However, if you put the urn in your sim's inventory, you will eventually get an opportunity pop-up to restore their ghost at the science facility. This, before the Supernatural expansion pack, was the only way to get a playable ghost in the family, if messing with the occult is your thing. And it's all right here in the base game! Unfortunately, the ghosts aren't that interesting, with passing through walls being their only real feature. But let's say this was all a random accident, and you never meant for poor Barbara Kronk to die. This is where your hard work pays off. Cook up the ambrosia and have the ghost dine on the delicacy, and watch the magic meal restore flesh and bone to their body, as if death never even stopped by. And there you go! That's one of the more involved ways of playing The Sims 3 base game and maximizing what it has to offer. There are other skills like guitar, painting, writing, and handiness, and a lot of rabbit hole jobs besides the culinary career. Expansions really brought this game to life, but the base game is still really impressive and arguably better than whatever the heck EA is trying to do with the series today. The Sims 4 was always a step down in many ways, and even its expansions aren't as expansive as The Sims 3 ones. So it's baffling that they are choosing to continue Sims 4. But if you're like me, get the appropriate mods to make up for what EA fails to do, like bug test their games, and keep enjoying The Sims 3. 
After all, sometimes the past is just better. I'm Bill from Good Old Days Gaming, and thanks for watching.